Kath, Program Dial for help. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to speak to you today. Um, it's a real pleasure to, to be here and just to pick up on the, on the theme that was started by, by Abby. I think it was incredibly inspiring and energising to hear from, uh, from Alan, Emily and David earlier about what they're doing on farm. Um, and, and, and really, and I think Rachel said, how the, the future's here now. Um, and I think that's, for me, all part of telling the story of, uh, of why uh, Welsh uh, red meat is, um, it, is such a wonderful thing. Um, and it's all, part of the, it's all part of the brand and it's all part of, the, uh, it's all part of what, makes it, uh, what makes it special. So it's, it, was great to, um, it, it was great to hear from them and it's, it's great to hear those stories. And, and, and I, I completely agree with what Kath finished off on just now about the importance of telling that story to everybody, but to our younger generations in particular. Um, unlike many of you, I, I've uh, tended to live in uh, and grow up in an urban background, and I think it's um, quite stark how uh, perhaps many of our younger generation don't, uh, don't know the story of, of where their food comes from in a way that they, they should, and I think uh, the Welsh story is a, really, uh, is a really powerful one and one that needs to be told, so I think it's great to hear the work that HCC are doing in that. Uh, in that space. Um, I'm just going to say a little bit about what, um, what's happening um, from a policy perspective. Uh, you've heard from the Minister already, so I'll, I'll, try, not to, I'll try not to go over ground that she's already, uh, already covered. Um, before I do that, I think, um, and, and I won't labour the point, but just a, a bit of, of context, um, which I think you're all, you're all aware, not least because it affects uh, you uh, uh, perhaps even more than it affects government, but clearly the current um, Economic situation, and we heard uh, we heard it right at the start of the conference, um, particularly in relation to inflation, um, is one that um, is having an impact on government, uh, like everyone else. Um, you will have heard from um, uh, the first minister and from uh, the minister for uh, for finance uh, in October that the cabinet has had to make some really difficult decisions regarding this year's uh, budget, which in effect. Uh, due to a combination of, of, of inflation and other pressures, is worth around 900, 900 million pounds less than when it was set uh, through the UK government comprehensive spending review. That unfortunately has had an impact in relation to reprioritising budgets in all areas, including uh, rural affairs. And it's something that we are uh, trying to manage on a, on a daily basis in order to ensure that as much um, support as possible goes to our rural communities uh, to do all the good work that um, that you do. Um, the budget situation for uh, for next year is not a is not a rosy one either, and, and cabinet ministers are in the process at the moment uh, of looking at what that means ahead of uh, the the usual publication of the draft budget before the end of the year. I'm just saying that just to give a bit of context to, to some of the some of the work that we're we're doing at the moment. Um, it is a it is a really important year for uh, agriculture. Uh, in Wales, um, it's a year of flux, as the recent times have been, um, and I think uh, it's a year that will probably help to set the tone, uh, hopefully in a positive way, for the future of, uh, uh, of Welsh agriculture going forward. We've obviously had the Agriculture Act for Wales, uh, which got royal assent in uh, in August, which is a massive milestone in that it sets the, the legislative framework for the first time uh, made in Wales for Wales. Uh, it provides uh, the framework for which uh, ministers um, need to abide by in terms of providing support to our rural communities and sets the sustainable land management as that, as that key framework. And the, the key parts of, of that framework are sustainable food production, they're about meeting our environment and climate goals, they're about supporting our communities, our culture and our, and our language. And I think that's, that's really important because those are the key the key facets of what we're trying to do from a, from a policy perspective. It's a momentous year also because it's the last year of EU funding, um, because of the way EU funding works, many of you will know this, uh, it works on, a, on an N plus three uh, rule, which means December 2023 uh, is the last time that we can draw uh, EU funds. Um, for us, as for all our beneficiaries, it's really been uh, about maximising our ability to use those funds in a positive way um, for agriculture uh, and rural communities in Wales. Um, our rural EU rural development programme uh, 
um, is of course therefore coming to an end. Um, we are very much on track uh, to maximise spend under that programme, which is a real, uh, a real testament, I think, to the efforts of, of, uh, of everybody um, who has benefited um, from it. Um, you know, with the end of that EU funding um, comes uncertainty, there's no doubt about it. Um, the EU worked on a seven year budget cycle. Um, UK government and therefore the budgets that we receive um, as a result tend to work on shorter budget cycles. That's just a, um, that's just a consequence and a reality of, 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 of what the future uh, brings. Uh, ministers, uh, and any of you who uh, followed oral questions in the Senate yesterday, will have heard the Minister say it herself, um, have tried to prioritise an element of stability in this changing world by um, confirming the, the basic payment scheme budget of 238 million for, uh, for this year. And as you heard from the Minister, uh, advance payments are, uh, are being made um, to, uh, to the vast majority of, of, uh, of farms in Wales. And that is a big part for us of providing some stability in this period of, um, of flux. Alongside those, we've got um, investment through the rural investment schemes. They're very much aimed at um, supporting uh, and preparing for uh, what comes next, um, which is the sustainable farming scheme. That is the big focus of all the work, um, certainly of my, uh, of my team, um, and I'm very grateful to, to everyone who's been contributing and supporting our development of it. It's been a, it's been a long journey so far. Um, uh, we've had several uh, rounds of engagement, of co-design. We've had a formal consultation on the scheme launching before the end of the year. Um, and it is a real opportunity, and it continues to be a real opportunity, I think, for all of us collectively, um, to design something that can be really exciting uh, in supporting Welsh agriculture, Welsh rural communities going forward. Um, we are, we are very much listening, um, and hopefully that's been seen through the different um, evolutions of our thinking um, over the last few years in relation to the scheme. We are very much listening, um, and the consultation is, uh, as all consultations are, an open one. Um, it will set out what our current thinking is, but will very much invite views uh, from uh, all stakeholders uh, on what that thinking is. It will include, um, obviously, questions around some of the more, uh, uh, perhaps the more contentious points. I mean, John, you, you mentioned the 10% tree, um, uh, tree target um, or tree element of the universal uh, layer of the, of the sustainable farming scheme. Um, that will be very much something that we will ask for views on, um, as will every other bit of the scheme, the 10% habitat. Uh, the design of it, uh, the way we intend to implement it through rural pavement oils, a lot of that will be very much there for the discussion. I think for us, the sustainable farming scheme has to come back to those, to those SLM objectives. It's got to be about sustainable food production. It's got to be about tackling the climate and, and nature emergencies. It's got to be about supporting our communities um, and our culture and, and the Welsh language. And, that, and that's what we're trying to what we're trying to do with the design of the scheme, and I hope we can continue working together uh, in the spirit of cooperation that, that, um, um, that I think has been a real credit um, to, to, to the way we, we do things in, in Wales. Um, and I won't be uh, tempted to be drawn into comparisons, um, but I do think it's a real credit to the way we, we work here, and I hope we can carry that on through the consultation later at the end of the year. Um, you've already heard about a lot about Welsh food and drink. Um, and it is a real success story. I was, uh, many of you I'm sure were at Blast Cymru uh, at the ICC in Newport a couple of weeks ago. Um, what an amazing showcase of uh, the best of, of Welsh food and drink products. Um, and what an amazing showcase of what you can do with those amazing ingredients uh, that we heard some of the stories about, some of the, the stories about earlier. Um, yes, there are challenges, and the session we've just had has, has talked a little bit about some of the challenges in relation to imports. There's no, there's no doubt about that, and some of that flux, some of that uncertainty comes from the changes in our trading relationships um, that are resulting um, from, um, um, from, from EU exit. But there are also opportunities, and the fact that 
um, Welsh Food and Drink Exports last year were nearly £800 million pounds worth, um, which is an increase of nearly 25%. And it's, the, if I remember correctly, the biggest increase of any of the UK nations, I think, is a real, is a real positive story. Um, and underneath that story um, um, it is very much, I think, the, the quality of the Welsh products. And um, for, for all of you here, the fact that meat and meat products was the highest export category, I think, is a real uh, is a real feather in the cap, and one that we should uh, we should absolutely celebrate. Um, Kath talked about building our brand reputation globally, and I think that's um, that's a really important part, certainly, of what we do and what we want to do and support as Welsh government uh, in terms of our food and drink strategy. And it's a really important part, I think, uh, of where HCC's work really, um, really, really, really helps. And, and HCC, for me, is an integral part of um, the success story uh, that is um, Welsh agriculture, Welsh food and drink. Um, we've heard a lot about evidence, the importance of evidence and fact. Uh, and I think that is definitely one of the areas where the work that HCC has been doing um, adds real value because this is a um, this is a world in which um, consumers are that much more savvy uh, they're asking uh, they're asking really difficult questions about their uh, their food and the provenance of their food and I think being able to demonstrate uh, the quality of it the sustainability of it in all its aspects um, is really important and the work that HCC supports in that in that space is uh, uh, is incredible uh, the work that HCC does uh, in support of farmers I think you know the various aspects of the red meat development program I think have been a real a real success story um, and the work that um, uh, Rachel alluded to around the biodiversity order you know the first time that we can um, uh, we can start to show that not only do we produce world class red meat we do it um, in a way that um, supports our uh, nature and, and, and protects our, our habitat and I think uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the results from the life cycle uh, analysis that, that Rachel talked about because I think again that will provide a huge amount of, uh, a, a amount of that evidence um, and then it's, 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 it's how, what do you do with that evidence and again I think we've heard a lot already about all the important programs that H HCC uh, runs to, to really uh, showcase that evidence and to show uh, why uh, Welsh red meat is um, uh, is something that should be on, on every table. So I think um, I'll 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 conclude there, uh, and I'm sure there'll, I'm sure there'll be questions. Um, just in saying that I think I absolutely appreciate um, that this is a, a time full of uncertainty. Um, I absolutely appreciate um, that uncertainty is unwelcome in any business, uh, but particularly a farming business. That tries to plan. That tries to plan ahead. Um, I can honestly say that we are trying our best to provide an element of certainty in that in that whirlwind of change. Um, but I think the change that's happening um, is one that we are absolutely determined um, as a Welsh government, um, and my policy team is absolutely determined. The change that that will be to the good that will. Um, support our, our industry, um, support our communities, uh, and really build on all these great stories that we already have about Wales, um, Welsh farming, Welsh food and drink. So I, I, I hope we can keep, you know, keep working together as we have done, um, and, um, and uh, I'm sure together we can, uh, we can write a, a really positive uh, new chapter in, uh, in this story. Thank you very much. Thank you.